Alright, what is going on guys? My name is Jason Brown and this is a video talking about the anamorphic lens that I've made so many videos about now. Um, it's a video explaining about how I use it, what I've done to set it up and how I've been getting on with it because I've really just thrown out videos um, trying my best to use it and each video I think gets better and better. So starting off, about a week before I went on holiday, and I'm on holiday right now, I bought a Snyder Cinelux, um, I think it's a Snyder Cruitz or something like that, Snyder Cinelux uh, WA 2x MC, and it's one of the projector lenses that they used to use in cinema to stretch the video back out into anamorphic, and it's a 2 times squeeze. Um, but the WA one, I think, is the one I have, has a built-in focus ring, so you don't need either the Allen key or the FM module to focus it separately. Now what this means is, this um, less common one, which is the one I've got, is actually two times heavier than the usual Snyder Cinelux that you'll be probably used to if you're watching this video. And um, so that means it's a kilogram, and I can't have it hanging on the front of any lens at all on the camera. I'm using a D3100 for this. So what I've done, and I've got a video showing it now, I've got a 15mm uh, a rail system, which again, come very, very quickly, right before I went on holiday, and it's, I chose a lens support rig. Um, it was fairly decently priced, about £40, and I thought at least it'll hold it in place, and I'll try and find something to fix it onto the front of the lens. And I thought I could use a step up ring 49mm to first I tried 72mm then I tried 68 I think and I think I tried another one I, I keep forgetting now but none of them actually fitted and this means that although it's held onto the front of the 50mm lens um, on the camera it's not actually fixed I've got um, some rubber bands in between the step up ring and the anamorphic lens, and um, I've got a, um, a plastic sort of snappy strap on the front to sort of clamp it down onto the rail system, but other than that it's quite precariously properly aligned onto the front of the camera using this rail system. So now we've got the more complicated things out of the way, which is mounting it, I'm going to talk about the image quality, and thankfully, because I managed to find such a good deal on this lens, um, I managed to get a good Snyder one rather than the Russian ones. So it means that this one is really, really sharp. In fact, it's, it's sharper than my lenses and camera can deliver anyway. So it's basically, it's out, out of the bottleneck, basically. In terms of colours and clearness, it's just, imagine like a Carl Zeiss lens. It's just, it's not affecting the image quality whatsoever. It's a really sharp lovely lens. Now behind the anamorphic lens I'm using a Pancola uh, 50mm 1.8 lens which is of course a screw mount lens so it's Nikon F mount to M42 with infinity focus um, adapter and then the 50mm 1.8 because it's just a lens that I acquired um, a year or two ago and it served me really well it's a good solid lens so I kept that on it and then anamorphic in front of that now, I have been looking around at a, a lens to replace the 50mm 1.8 because I think that's my bottleneck right now. And I really want to use a 50mm 1.4 Nikon, but I kind of know that it's going to vignette on the anamorphic lens because right now, with the infinity adapter and the 50mm Pancola lens, it's not actually a 50mm field of view um, on its own. It's um, there's a 1.1 times crop with the infinity adapter, so it's really I'm using like a 55 mil lens behind the anamorphic adapter, and if you know your stuff, then you know that around 55, 58 mil is the minimum to avoid um, vignetting. And on say more than half of the clips that I've used with it precariously on the front, um, they haven't hasn't been any vignetting. So I've been guessing away with using a, a 50mm lens on the front and I don't think if I buy I think if I buy a 50mm 1.4 Nikon mount lens I think it's just going to vignette and I would have wasted my money um, I could go for an 85 1.8 which is about 100 £120 again I want to keep it as um, closer to 55 or 58 as possible 
Um, but I could get an 85 1.8. Basically, what you're seeing right now is you're seeing the 50 mil, say, is about on these frame lines on 16 by 9. But because of the anamorphic lens, you're seeing the same vertical height, but you're seeing more width. So that's how it works. It's a f imagine it being a 50 mil lens, but you're seeing the the width of a 25 mil lens, which is really really cool. So if I got a 100 mil lens on that, you'd get 100 mil in the middle, but then it would be the width of a an 8 to 50 mil. So it's interesting, but very very complicated, and I want to get a really solid prime between the camera and the anamorphic lens and I really hope that you can help me out with that because I don't know quite what to get. So hopefully you know the score. I'm in Orkney, I'm on holiday. This isn't the lodge by the way, this is like a an outhouse of the lodge. Jason for the Extreme Sounds Audio Vision YouTube channel. See ya.